What's up, son? It's Blind Rod with Side Attack once again, and welcome to my first ever pre built gaming PC review. This is the Mech Ultra from Zotac, and it's the base model, meaning it comes with an RTX 2070 and scaled down in a few other components, which we'll go over right now. But if you guys wanted to see an actual teardown of it and get my opinions on build quality, be sure to check out the unboxing and teardown video, which I'll leave linked up in the corner. The rest of the components in here include an 8700K and a Z370 motherboard. The motherboard's an interesting one because it is branded as the Mech Ultra and you get the BIOS updates, etc., from the Zotac website. However, you can clearly see that it's actually gonna be an ASRock motherboard. I had one very similar to this as well. And from all the features and comparing everything that I could find out, it appears to be a very, very similar, if not exactly the Z370 Killer SLI AC model that ASRock has, which I have the box for actually right down here, which this one's just the SLI without the Wi-Fi. Uh, AC wireless and the Bluetooth, but as I can as I said, it's pretty much that they they make another one exactly like this with AC Wi-Fi and it appears to be uh, what's in this machine if you go through the BIOS. So if you're familiar with ASRock and you're looking to pick up a pre-built and you like the ASRock UFI and all of that, this might be a pre-built you want to take a look at. I found that super interesting. Now, of course, the RTX 2070 that's going to be in here is going to be from Zotac because they do make their own graphics cards. It also includes an unmarked 256 gigabyte NVMe drive and a two terabyte uh, regular hard drive, a three and a half inch that goes in the back. So underneath the power supply shroud. Finally, for internal components, we have the CPU cooler, which appears to be just a standard ASU Tech rebranded as Zotac, as it does have a nice RGB LED Zotac logo on the top of it. It's gonna be 240 millimeters, and on initial boot, you are going to get a little bit of trickle as they installed it in the top of the chassis. Now the chassis itself, I'm not really sure where it came from, but the big things to note here is going to be that it does have RGB LEDs right here. Unfortunately, mine don't work. It came shipped and they are not working. I have uh, emailed them to let them know. We'll have to see uh, how the RMA process would work in that, that certain uh, situation, which it's kind of nice to always see kind of little things happen like that. However, all the internal components, except for the RGB LEDs are working. You can control them with an application called Spectra and it's on the Zotac website. A complaint there is that it, it's good and bad. None of the software got pre-installed on the system. So you're talking about getting a system with a completely fresh, clean install of Windows 10 Home and it's not going to have any bloatware whatsoever. But in the manual and everywhere else, I couldn't or at least failed to find any information on how to change the RGB LEDs. And I had to actually navigate to the website, download the Fusion software as well as the Spectra software and try to, or sorry, excuse me, the Firestorm software as well as the Spectra software to try and find which one would allow me to go ahead and change those RGB LEDs. So I think they could perform that a little bit better either in a manual or maybe just something on the desktop. However, I really like that they have a pre-built here that comes with a complete fresh install of Windows with no bloatware. That being said, the only thing that they did forget to do was to initialize the two terabyte hard drive. So you only see on initial boot the 256 gigabyte NVMe drive. And if you're talking about a pre-built, you're talking about selling it to potentially people that don't really have the knowledge to go in and create partitions, etc. And so I think that as far as their imaging process goes, that is something that needs to be resolved. Finally, all of it is powered by a thousand watt, 80 plus gold power supply. And I was super excited to see that. The other thing that they did include in the box was all of the additional cables as it is a modular power supply. So you're gonna be able to go back through and install extra components and not have to be worried about trying to find those additional power supply cables. You also get two panels for the chassis. You get a clear side window as well as a closed off just black side panel. So having multiple options there was something 
I was very appreciative of. Now the front actually has two 200 millimeter fans and a rear exhaust 120 millimeter fan. All that aside, let's talk about benchmarks and temperatures. First, we'll go over temperatures. The max CPU temperature was 84 degrees Celsius. Hopping into the BIOS, I did notice that they did have the XMP profile set. However, they did not have anything overclocked on the CPU itself, nor did they have anything uh, anything like MCE enabled and taking a look you were looking at an all-core boost of 4.3 gigahertz with a single core boost of 4.7 gigahertz and it was teetering between 1.28 and 1.3 volts what this means is there's a little bit of room for improvement on thermals by knocking down that voltage that V core voltage to about 1.25 you could also most likely get to a 4.8 gigahertz all core overclock if you're willing to put in the work there. I've had experience with the 8700K in, like I said, the ASRock motherboard, and that's what you would be looking at. But as it sits right now, the thermals are teetering on that TJ Maxx, and you wanna be a little bit careful. I think you have about a delta of about 10 degrees Celsius right there before throttling kicks in. Now on the GPU, it got interesting too. As stock out of the box, it's going to start throttling at 80 degrees Celsius, and it's going to take that boost clock or that GPU boost clock to about 1800 megahertz on the RTX 2070. And I think that you can boost a little bit further than that if you got some overclocking software like MSI Afterburner or even Zotac's own Firestorm and turned up that temp limit and power limit up, you could get a little bit more juice out of the RTX 2070. However, you only have probably a delta of another four degrees Celsius, so be a little careful with that. All that being said, we did all of the tests at 1440p unless it was specified otherwise in some of the synthetic benchmarks such as Fire Strike and Superposition, and we did it all at the stock out-of-the-box settings that it gets shipped as, so you can expect this performance out-of-the-box without having to do any tweaks. Taking a look at Cinebench, you had a score of 1440, which falls a little bit short, you know, if from the 1500 you would get with MCE enabled or multi-core enhancement. And the single threaded score was a 200 even. On CPU-Z, it had a 514 for its single and a 3804 for its multi-threaded performance. Both of these tests are for the CPU only. Moving out of that, we had some games. Deus Ex Mankind Divided had 1% mins of 39 with an average of 58 and a max of 67. While the built-in benchmark for Far Cry 5 had a minimum of 64 with an average of 87 and a high of 102. Both of these were at 1440p uh, high settings. Final Fantasy 15, the benchmark scored a 6,662 at 1440p on high, falling just short of the standard benchmark for the RTX 2070, uh, according to the Final Fantasy 15 website. So just keep that in mind. The Fire Strike scored a 19,414. However, I did run a stress test and it did not pass the stress test. A, a pass would be a 97% and it fell just a little bit short with a 95 point, or I believe it was 95.9, I'll, I'll put it up. It did fall short at about 96%. So I, I think that has something to do with the, the throttling and the amount of heat getting pushed through this system when you're doing some of the stress testing. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had a min of 65 with an average of 80 and a max of 126. And the Superposition 4K optimized benchmark scored 6,854. Time Spy, the synthetic benchmark, scored 8,145. And moving back to non-synthetic benchmarks, we have Ark Survival Evolved, which holy crap, I didn't realize how much work they put into that game and I wanna hop in and check out what it is now. They, I, I ran it at 1440p high settings and we had a min of 51 FPS with an average of 57. And that was with a lot of God rays coming in uh, on the beach there. Now, Black Ops 4, Blackout, we actually tested Blackout, just that game mode. 
and I can't remember where we dropped exactly. It'll probably be in the footage or you can watch all the live benchmarks, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. 1440p maxed out settings, including view distance cranked all the way up. We had mins of 68 with an average of 102. Pretty respectable numbers there. Darksiders 3 at 1440p. This is an interesting one. I'll be working on getting a how-to for you guys there. Darksiders 3 actually has a 60 FPS cap. You have to go into the configuration files to remove that cap, which we did do. And you can see here at 1440p on Epic, we scored a min of 66 with an average of 77. Not too bad for a bleeding edge title that's just released. It is very console port heavy. It feels like it. it just feels like a console port. Get one of these. Uh, that's a topic for another time. All right, so Fortnite, epic settings, a min of 67 and an average of 105 FPS. League of Legends maxed out at 1440p, min of 285 and a max of 507. You'll be able to run that 240 hertz panel, 1440p, uh, yeah. <laughs> Monster Hunter World, max settings. You had a min of 45 with an average of 54. They still haven't really fixed this game for PC, but it is getting better. It's a little disappointing that that game still can't solidly run at, at 60 FPS ever. Uh, PUBG on Ultra had a min of 84 with an average of 96. And Middle Earth Shadow of War had a min of 27 and an average of 103. Now that was a hard min, I believe. I don't believe that was a 1% min. I do need to go through the CSV file and probably try to figure out how to recapture that. Not a big fan of their built-in benchmark. Strange Brigade is another one that has a built-in benchmark. They had mins of 54 with an average of 111 frames per second. And finally, Warframe uh, maxed out 1440p, had a min of 120 FPS and an average of 146 frames per second. So pretty awesome stuff there. Basically all my tests were based on either top games on Twitch, synthetic benchmarks that are easy to run and easy to compare to, or top games being played on Steam. If you prefer this, let me know in the comment section below. We did do a poll prior to this seeing what resolution people would expect to play when purchasing an RTX 2070 and that resolution was 1440 by and large in that poll. And so when we do these tests, I just am gonna try to make it uh, exactly what people are looking for when purchasing a system like this. And the reason for that is because going through and doing every resolution and all of that would be very time consuming and I need to uh, go to go to a day job. So there you go. Overall, my impressions of the Mech Ultra are this. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a pre-built, it is one of the better ones on the market. It also kind of lends itself over to the enthusiast market with the choice of components, along with the build quality and the ease of upgradability. Now, there's inherent issues with the Z370 platform and the 8700K in particular that revolve around heat, et cetera, that you can definitely see have affected this system. We did see throttling, of course, on the CPU as well as throttling on the GPU. And really with the amount of power required by the components in the system and it pretty much being air-cooled on the GPU and a smaller, you know, 240 millimeter rad all-in-one cooler for the CPU, the temperatures are exactly where I would expect it. I was going to go over some overclocking, however, after taking a look at the system, uh, I don't think that we really have any overhead to overclock either the GPU or the CPU unless we made some modifications uh, to the cooling solution for the CPU. Now on the GPU, I think we could do some overclocking on. I would like to also rip that out and throw it on a test bench. I have another RTX 2070 from uh, EVGA up there and try to compare those two. I haven't gotten all of my testing for that one done yet because my test bench is all in pieces, but there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Zotac Mech Ultra. You can find the Amazon affiliate link in the description below, and I will see you next Tuesday.